Robert Sutz is a man on a mission. An acclaimed artist for over 40 years, known for painting delicate portrayals of urban scenes, now his passion for artistic expression has turned into a history lesson. Okay, ready to begin. Sutz's mission? To remember and honor the victims and survivors of the Holocaust. He does this by creating a life mask of the survivor, what he calls an irrefutable three-dimensional portrait, images taken from real life to help preserve the subject's likeness. These people just look like us. They look like normal, very normal people, just like us. For Sutz, this project is highly personal. His father's entire family was killed in Auschwitz, leaving his father as the sole survivor. Sutz wanted to honor his father and the millions of others who perished as well. I'm doing what I'm doing because I feel it's important. And especially for my father's family, it is a legacy uh, that I feel is terribly important for future generations to know that this horrible, unbelievable event happened. In this room, we have some of the life masks that I have in a storage room. Sutz has made over 90 masks of Holocaust survivors and liberators and stores them here in a modest studio near his home in Scottsdale, Arizona. Alex White, who was saved by uh, Schindler's List, Behind each mask is a story which Sutz dramatically captures on video, interviewing every one of his survivors to keep a record of their experience and what they witnessed. My name is Leon Malmed. My name is Charles Zabuski. My name is Magda Willinger. My name is Henry Sontag. My name is Marion Sapir. My name is Alex Bars. My name is Anna Koenig. Sunday, uh, July 19th was a beautiful day, just like today with the blue sky, uh, a knock on the door. Stutz says he videotapes all of his subjects because it's important to know what they sound like so their stories can come to life as he draws them. Here are some preliminary sketches. While the survivors share their stories, Sutch sketches their visions onto three by five note cards. He's compiled thousands of images, some of them now paintings, each so vivid and almost unbearable to look at, which for Sutz is exactly the point. Yeah, a man, a camarade for me, he said to me, Schley me, I have enough. I can't, I can't live more. I said, no, you must, uh, you must uh, writing, maybe, maybe one day is better. Yeah, no, I can't. Yeah, he's going up from here. He, he's uh, going for the electric first. Three seconds, he's dead. It is kind of painful. There's so many people ask me, how can you listen to all these disturbing, uh, horrid stories about what some of these people go through? Doesn't it bother you? Doesn't it shake you up so you can't do what you're doing? And uh, my answer is that no, it, it does bother me. It does bother me, but I find it so important to pay attention, listen to, listen to the people, and to learn what they've gone through. I think we are ready. I guess the exciting part is to try to capture visually some of the things that they witnessed so future generations can see them. Maybe they will be shaken up a little bit by seeing them, and this is good. The most difficult experience during my Holocaust was the Nazi hit my mother over her head when she refused to give me away. Now my life is collections, seems more dream than history. I hope this never happens again. All of these paintings were told to me by survivors that uh, I interviewed. This man was keeping track of dead bodies. It's a pretty good record. 
All the Holocaust documentation that now exists certainly does not include what I am doing. There is no question that these likenesses were taken from life. But molding is no easy task. His subjects have to sit for close to an hour while Sutz spreads Vaseline and mineral oil over their face, then plasters them with the bandages similar to the material used for broken arms and legs. Once the material sets, the mask is complete. The finishing touches are done weeks later back at his studio. Oh, Leon, we got a good one. I don't see much, but you do. Oh, oh it's a good one. I think this is it. He brings a name and a face to people who had nothing but tattoos on their arms. Words are in history books. You can open up any book and you will find stories. But when you look at his mask, you see a person that was once alive, a person who was in the Holocaust and survived. I really enjoy doing all of the types of art that I am doing. Uh, in making the life masks, I find that to be a wonderful challenge. When I do pastel portraits, each portrait is a learning experience, and uh, I find it very exciting to come to my studio every day and continue some of the paintings that I'm working on and try to make each one a little better, a little more effective. None of his work is for sale, and Sutz pays sign. for everything himself. He plans on donating his work to a museum as part of a permanent exhibit, reminding people that this period in history actually happened. I would like them to walk away from the exhibit and feel a little bit more concerned about tolerance and to be reminded that the people that lived through the Holocaust were people just like us. An artist with a clear vision to preserve history so that others never forget.